What's up guys, today I'm happy to share with you a simple winning plan against the Scandinavian defense, which arises after black going pawn to d5 on the first booth. And what I've noticed about it is that, that very often white players don't know that much about it, it's a less mainstream opening compared to the Italian game or the Sicilian defense, and so white players just play normal moves, they capture here, then they develop the knight, attacking this queen, so far so good. After queen a5 they play something like d4 or knight f3, black develops, white develops knight as well, looks like white is playing common sense absolutely perfect moves, but here's the problem. Within just a couple moves, white often finds themselves in a losing position, because black has a powerful attacking plane and white is not sure how to deal with it. So first black goes bishop g4, pinning the, the knight down to the queen. White thinks to himself, okay, let me neutralize the pin by playing bishop e2. Okay, black goes knight c6, and now it starts being slightly annoying that black is putting pressure here, but white thinks to himself, okay, let me castle, I gotta castle anyway. Now black castles queenside, and it turns out that there is this unpleasant opposition of black's rook against your queen, and it's also putting more pressure to the pawn. Now white is trying to hold on to this pawn by playing bishop e3, but after e5, white is actually already quite in a big trouble. You can see that black is attacking this pawn, the pawn is pinned down to the queen once again, black is putting pressure that way, the knight is adding pressure, and like very often even relatively strong players just can't get out of an opening and are got crushed real quick. That's the issue of you playing against the Scandinavian defense without knowing really well what to do. And here's our time to turn the situation around. Knowing what to anticipate from black, you can prevent them from doing just that, leaving them completely clueless of what to do. So we know that they expect you to develop your knight over here so that they can counter it with bishop g4 pinning your knight. And therefore we just don't, we don't move the knight over here just yet. Secondly, we know that as soon as you put this pawn to d4, they're gonna target it in a very near future, and so we just don't put our pawn there as well. So what do you do instead? Well, you play bishop c4 first, and then you solidify it by playing pawn to d3, let's say after black goes knight f6 or any other move, you play pawn to d3. And notice that now your position is so solid that there is just absolutely nothing they can possibly attack anywhere, right? If your pawn is on d3, it is defended, right? Your bishop is defending, everything is defending. And here's another beauty of this thing. At some point, let's say they go c6, for example, here, very common move in the Scandinavian defense, controlling some central squares, but also preparing for the queen to escape to if necessary. And you then play bishop d2, and also you have the same setup that you play no matter what black does. So you're preparing to castle queenside, and your plan is to play bishop d2, queen to e2, and later to castle queenside. So you just do that. Also, bishop d2 potentially targets this queen somewhere in the future, you may wish to use that tactical motif. Now, they usually go bishop g4 anyway, because, I mean, that's their plan, so even uh, although you don't have your knight there, they just plan it, it seems active for black. But strangely enough, this bishop g4 is fired so badly, if black would only knew what they were subscribing to, they would never play this, but so far they are still optimistic, they think everything's good, so they do play this move. You play pawn to f3, pushing this bishop back, and after bishop h5 you continue with your plan, queen to e2, preparing to castle queenside and just developing pieces, black thinks that, okay, things are normal, they're also developing knight d7, standard Scandinavian defense move, and little do they know, their position is already lost, although it's hard to believe, just looking at the position at the moment, it seems like both players are just developing, but you've got this really powerful plan of a press on the king side. So you do that by playing pawn g4, taking advantage of this exposed bishop, and so you gain those extra temples for your uh, quick advancement on the king side. Now black goes bishop g6, which is forced, and you follow up with pawn to f4. And this king side push is what actually your winning plan against the Scandinavian defense. And again, they're completely clueless about this, and you're gonna win a lot of games, I promise you, just try it out. Now, after f4, your first idea is very simple, to play pawn f5 and capture the bishop, because it will be trapped. Also notice that playing e6 will never help black, because actually this pawn is pinned anyway. So playing f5 will now be even stronger for you, because not only you attack this bishop, but in some variations maybe you may consider even you know going into this direction and just going after black's king. So going e6 is only making things worse for black and is not helpful at all, so let's take it back. What do they do if they want to save this bishop against this f5 threat? Well, they'll have to move their h-pawn, right, providing this escape square. So you do play pawn f5, and now you're completely locking their king side. Now this bishop is not going to do anything constructive for a really long time. It's out of the game. Now your pawn barrier is just cutting it off. 
Secondly, it's hard for Black to develop normally, because in order to develop this Black Square Bishop to castle, they'd wish to play e6, but it's impossible because you would immediately capture the pawn. And even castling queenside is actually impossible for Black, because that will leave this epsilon pawn undefended, and you're going to grab it instantaneously. So for Black, it's really hard to come up with any meaningful continuation here, and your position is already completely winning and completely dominant, but on top of all that, you have a force in win, which is a move knight to b5, opening up this discovered attack of the queen. And you're winning in all variations, but finally enough, in most cases, they retreat their queen to d8, feeling that it's a safer square and it controls, you know, the c square so that you can jump there, but you just reroute it slightly to d6 and it's a nice smaller checkmate. Notice that the pawn is pinned, so it is actually a checkmate. You might notice that in the previous example, Black suffered at the end, they lost because of this discovered attack against their queen. And some of your opponents will decide to just move the, move the queen back in advance so that they never have to worry about it. And guess what? That doesn't change anything in your plan. You keep playing the very same moves. You play queen e2, preparing the castle queenside, developing the queen on this open uh, position. They usually respond with bishop g4 anyway, because they aren't familiar with your kingside press plan. And you do just that. You play a 3 and you gain all these extra temples for your kingside expansion thanks to this bishop. So bishop g4 seemed to be an active move for black at first, but it backfires so badly that they end up in a losing position within just a few moves. So that's how you alt smart them. Now, right now the threat is still the same, pawn to f5. I mean, you may even press the knight after that as well. For example, I mean, if they go something like pawn h5 trying to challenge your pawn, you still do the same thing in pawn f5 to bishop h7. You can even keep pressing with pawn to g5, this time driving the knight away. And uh, after they go with the knight somewhere, let's say knight g4, I mean, again, your position is so dominant that probably there are many ways for you to win. But here, the fun way is to go after black's king right away with this bishop takes f7 little tactics. It's not even a sacrifice because you follow up with pawn to g6 and you're going to get a piece back. But at the same time, you're exposing this king and now you're simply having a winning attack. So if black captures here, if it tries to hide back, you know, it will lead to a very funny checkmate, queen to e6. So it's not going to work for black. If instead it captures over here, I mean, it's pretty obvious that the king is deadly exposed. You're going to keep chasing it. Similarly, after knight of six, for example, you can go knight of three, and then you follow up with rook g1 check, knight g5, and it's over. So that's how, once again, you win with this kingside press instantaneously against black, who's absolutely clueless of what the heck is going on here. The final question you may have here is, what if black never plays bishop g4, allowing for your kingside press plan? Okay, what if they just develop their bishop to f5? I mean, in most cases, they will play bishop g4 just because it looks so tempting for black. But if they play bishop f5, first of all, like good news is that it doesn't create any problems for you whatsoever. I mean, this bishop is attacking nothing, right? You have like rock solid pawns here. And secondly, you keep playing the same moves. Bishop d2 first. Let's say they go pawn c6, you play queen e2, all the same stuff. They play pawn e6. And now there is also an additional interesting idea that you may deploy against this bishop f5 development. Now you can actually develop your knight to f Three, knowing that the bishop has been developed over here to f5 and it no longer is going to go to g4 and pin your knight, we can develop our knight normally to f3. So black thinks that it's just the development, normal development going on for both sides. They're playing something like 97. But then you have another interesting attack and plan. And it's also quite sudden. You go knight to d4, taking advantage of the fact that unlike the main line variations where you have your pawn over here, now this square d4 is vacant for your knight, and you can jump over there, attack this bishop on f5, and as it goes back, you can then sack one of your minor pieces on e6. And I will actually encourage you to do that, because if although the computer often doesn't like this, I will say that in a real practical game, especially if it's a blitz game, you have great chances of success. Now, with this little sacrifice, you achieve a lot of things. First of all, you got two pawns for a minor piece, so technically you're only one pawn down, which is not such a big of a deal. Secondly, obviously you expose black's king, and now with this opposition of your queen against it, that enables you for all kinds of, you know, discovered checks in the future. So black is already getting worried about that. The second nice thing is that your knight on e6 controls these two squares, f8 and uh, d8, and therefore black's king can never castle either kingside or queenside, it's just impossible. Okay, and finally, your knight from e6 also looks at this square c7, and from there it's gonna fork the king and the rook, so if black ever moves their queen away, or if you use this discover check idea, you can land your knight to c7 and then grab the rook. 
So that's another attacking plan. You see how you've got a lot of attacking ideas. And even if Stockfish can find a perfect defense for black, you know, it shouldn't stop you from using it. I think that, again, in most cases, you're going to win. Just like Mikhail Tal said that there are two types of sacrifices, the correct ones and mine, so you can also feel free to do that. In most cases, actually, according to the database, black play the losing mistake right away. They notice that it's unpleasant to have their king there, and they move king to f7, hoping to play rook e8, you know, something like that. But you just go knight g5, check to the king, and it ends very quick into something like scholar's checkmate, and uh, that is basically it. So this is uh, another really cool attacking plan. In case black does not develop their bishop to g4, you still have this interesting idea at hand. Now let me know what you think about this, or if you have any questions or doubts about this variation in comments down below, and I'll be sure to follow up. And also to those of you who feel that match train openings is not enough to level up your chess overall, I'm with you 100%. Chess is a strategic game after all, and if you want to learn that side of chess, I'd recommend that you check out this free masterclass by clicking the link over there. Keep crushing it, and I'll talk to you soon.